All right, this is the five point. Mm, Jesus, snow on the ground, thick as hell. This is the 5.3 LM7 that I pulled out of a 2001 Tahoe. I'm using the the truck fuel rails. I just cut off the little plastic thing that's on the bottom of it. I'm using the car's starter wires. It's real easy to integrate the the 00-411, whatever the hell you call it, PCM. Um, <clears throat> pretty much everything works. I'm uh, I got a shit. I got a few more sensors to connect. Oh yeah, it's snowing pretty good. I had to get all the snow off the hood to open it. But uh, yeah, it's a few other sensors I have to connect. Shit, that scared the hell out of me. This is the low oil. This is the coolant temperature, and um, those are pretty much the only one. Oh, and uh, well, yeah, those are really the only ones I have to connect now. But yeah, there's no need for the Impala SS uh, or Caprice PCM. Let me show you the. Oh, oh I use the truck oil pan. There it goes right there. It probably is two or three inches below the cross member, not four or five like everybody says. Uh, it's actually not that bad. I don't have any exhaust on here right now because I'm currently trying to make a bracket for it to work. Let's see if I can plug this thing back up it keeps coming out Ugh. this is just a mock-up I'm gonna get a longer hose hold on let me sit this down <coughs> all right but yeah this is just a mock-up uh, factory check engine light works I'm trying to get the cruise control to work I'm gonna clean up the wires um, it's a three wire setup. I bypassed all of the the fuel pump things and just went straight to the little red connector that's right here. I haven't put on any of the accessories yet just because um, I'm going to have to relocate the power steering um, what do you call it? the power steering hoses or get some shorter ones because the power steering is going to be right there now instead of all the way on this side <sighs> I used a lawnmower blade for engine mount I cut it into like a 5 inch strips transmission to the transmission cross member with the engine hoist on it and then pull the engine back towards the front of the car as most as I could and then lowered it down set the cut off um, set the cut off lawnmower blade on there mark where it's going to be drilled holes welded it saved myself 50 well I'm not going to say 50 because for LT1 now it's a lot more I saved myself about $140 all together right now I have $780 into it I just ordered a uh, a truck um, accessory bracket for the alternator and power steering pump. I have the the AC uh, bracket in the backyard, and I have the truck water pump in the back too. Don't think I'll have any issues with it. Um, <clears throat> I bypass the. Well, not bypassed. I utilized the factory fuse box so to give it a clean look so it's not like wires just like hanging from everywhere. I'm gonna clean that up over there. But, um, <clears throat> all of these uh, fuses right here are different now. They either have a pink or a orange wire going to it, and these right here have thick 
orange wires going to it, I think. Um, after you put it so it's standalone, I just used the starter wire from the Tahoe and grouped all of the pink wires together and ran it off a off the air pump relay saying as though it has everything you need on it the ground the power and the switch so this right here controls the injectors O2 sensors um, and every pink wire that's in the car so it's ran from the air pump then the air pump fuse so if anything happens it'll pop the constant is handled through uh, it's only about three or four orange wires that it actually goes to the PCM so those are just handled through here um, then the starter relay like I said the orange th the red wire that is for jumping the the um, fuel pump relay I just attached that to a one of the pink wires that was in there so it comes on when it's switched power uh, re fully rebuilt the engine well I'm not gonna say fully new uh new uh, rod bearings, main bearings, all new seals, gaskets, uh, full synthetic oil, royal purple. I'm gonna use this factory thing too. This is just, like I said, this is just um, showing everybody the issues with connecting it to a uh, Impala SS slash Caprice 94-96. Uh, the windshield wipers don't get in the way of anything except for when I decide to put the LS2 fuel rail covers on it after I change the fuel rails. Uh, the um, the factory, what do you call it? Um, damn it. Uh, the factory heater core wire, well hoses don't get in the way as soon as I connect that uh, screw right there it should pull everything out of the way. Um, the harness gets attached through that, I don't know if you can see it, but it's a grommet that goes straight through the firewall, you just cut that off, and it's two plugs inside of the car, Let's see if I can show them to you, that controls everything under the hood, my car is like frozen. Uh, see if I can let it adjust first. This plug right here, this yellow wire, goes to the starter. Um, this white plug right here is all of the uh, lights on the dashboard. So everything from the check engine light, low oil, low coolant, uh, temperature, alternator, and uh, there's another one the big black one that's usually right there that one controls the AC um, it controls the AC uh, uh, what else the uh, ABS uh, the fuel pump relay that I bypass so you really don't need to mess with that um, and a couple other things the factory starter wire yellow and the factory starter constant black. Uh, I, I currently have two batteries in the trunk, so there's not a battery right here right now. Uh, uh, so all together, like I said, I have seven hundred and eighty dollars into it, the including the alternator bracket. I'm gonna see if I, there's a way I can use my factory. Um, high output alternator that I bought for a, little, a long time ago integrated into the truck harness well truck bracket oh these are the grounds for the neutral safety switch and the the uh, ABS there's a couple other grounds around there that you, I just connected and put right here for a temporary connection alright about to crank it up Oh yeah, I need new seats. So if anybody knows where some good factory seats are, let me know.
you can probably hear the fuel pump, but you can see the check engine lights working. It's in test mode. Here we go. Like I said, there's no exhaust on it right now. That's why it was that loud. Oh yeah, I poured them, polished the heads too. So I gotta get another tune. I sent the computer off to this guy on eBay, uh, Cool Mike 220, I think, or two, Cool Mike 222, and he programmed my truck PCM to run standalone. So if you have a truck PCM, you have to have it program the VAT system programmed out because it's in through the serial data with the BCM, I think. Whew. Um, the transmission bolted to it, um, no problems except for you have to egg the holes on if you're using the the Tahoe or whatever 2000 something um, flywheel, which I did. You have to egg the holes in, not out, and by the 20 I, I ordered one off of eBay it was a little just $25 uh, spacer thing so the the um, transmission well no so the torque converter can bolt, bolt to the flywheel the only difference between the 4L60E that I'm using and the newer one is that the newer one covers the whole flywheel and uh, has a hole at the top for a bolt and um it has a removable bell housing. Other than that, everything's the same. Uh, I have no transmission fluid in it right now. I plan on changing the gears in the car too, to 373s or 411s because I have the PCM program for 373s with a 24 inch wheel because that's what I have. <sighs> Be out here in the snow. It's going down. Oh, Jesus. I'm not doing this on purpose. It is really slick and slippery right here uh what else oh yeah uh the engine fits right in uh the passenger side lt1 bracket is about two or three inches pushed back to account for the ac compressor so yeah you gotta account for that but uh there's my engine mount for that side. Sit back on the other side. Oh, jeez. And there's that side. Don't know if you can see it, but I'm going to try to use the factory truck manifold, uh, cut it, and clock it so I can use the factory exhaust because I want my car quiet. So, like I said, all together, to have a driving car was 700 and, well, let's say $800. That was including the the engine, the rebuild kit, the truck tuning, um, miscellaneous parts, and everything. So, yeah, it's in and running. Whew. Yeah, no issues with the hood clearance. Oh, let me put this thing back on. Oh, yeah, the windshield wipers work. I would cut them on, but I'm not trying to break them. Ugh. All right, deuces.